Did you know that it's cheaper to speak in French on a Canadian phone line? There is something newsy related to one of my Red videos, so I wanted to do a little update today. So here is the Fido Rogers website in uh, Ontario with all the cell phone plans listed. Now I used to be a programmer, so I'm gonna do some technical stuff here. By clicking this button and choosing Quebec, whoa, looks like we hacked into some prices from a different region. Pretty advanced stuff. In Ontario, you pay $80 for 15 gigabytes of data, but in Quebec, you pay $55 for 20 gigabytes of data. You pay less and you get more. Quel homme! Let's jump over to Kudo. Tell us in British Columbia. They seem to have figured out that it looks bad to have the exact same plan at different prices. But they didn't count on my childhood mastery of spotting equivalent numbers because for $45 in British Columbia, you get four gigabytes. But for $45 in Quebec, you get eight gigabytes. C'est pas pire, papa. Oui, papa, vous trouvez pas mieux ailleurs. Ils sont uniques, pas cher. So, what gives? Is this an example of francophone privilege? Will JJ McCullough be making a video about this next week? Well, let's take a look at one more company, Fizz, which is Videotron. So, for $70 a month in Quebec, you can get 20 gigs of data. And in Alberta, you get an error because it doesn't exist. You see folks, Quebec has a big independent fourth telecom operator. And the big news this week is the rest of Canada might get one too. Now I've talked about Videotron before, it's the ISP that sounds like it could be this Transformers name. Really turning into crap John Oliver today. Videotron is owned by Quebecor. The controlling shareholder and CEO is a man called Pierre Carl Pelado or PKP. And this guy is Quebec blue blood in more sense than one. He is a Quebecois nationalist and was the leader of the Parti Quebecois for a minute. But he's also uh, very rich and uh, that makes him kind of a personality in that way that uh, fuck you money uh, does. <laughs> His middle name used to be Carl uh, with a C, but he changed it when he was in university to Carl with a K because he was stoked uh, about Karl Marx. So Quebecor, because of its governance, has a very Quebec uh, personality to it. It's focused on being the master of its own house, and I've compared them to the dwarves in Lord of the Rings for a reason. Roll the clip! The dwarves? They hide in their mountains seeking riches. They care nothing for the troubles of others. Quebecor has just never really been that bothered with the rest of Canada. Its brand has found its strength, its niche. I mean, it's on the name of a fucking company. And the competition across the various things it does has been good for Quebec, obviously. But it's not something that's been beneficial to the other major markets in Canada. But it appears things may be changing. Laser beak, prepare for flight. Operation Destruction. Well, most people were watching these palangis getting a hiding at the Olympics. Some other people were getting excited for the 2021 auction of Spectrum. The 5G fundraising fiesta for the feds. For over a decade now, the feds have been setting aside Spectrum so that companies outside of the big three don't have to outbid some of the deepest pockets in the country. Which is good policy. Beforehand, it was like asking a little kid to climb up a cliff with three experienced climbers. And now it's a bit like the federal government has thrown down a kids only ladder. You know, climbing it is still hard. Uh, we've lost a lot of kids over the years, but it's nowhere near as impossible as before. As always this year, there were a lot of smaller operators buying up Spectrum. Put me in coach, I can do it. But Videotron reached into its own pretty deep pockets and bought a shitload of prime licenses all across Canada. It's impossible to ignore. 294 of them for 829 million in major markets, which is actually more than TELUS. Objective accomplished. Now we've seen something like this before. Uh, at a previous Spectrum auction, Videotron bought licenses in Quebec, but they also acquired a few slivers in other parts of Canada, kind of like a, a Spectrum sampler dish, but which kind of hinted at expansion and neoliberal beers and boners were cracked across the country for the competition. Yes, here's the business. But then they ended up selling that for a profit or trading it away in various deals. So a lot of people looked at this in retrospect and said, wow, that blows. Uh, Quebec Corps played the federal system just like its namesake province does. And uh, we've only got a few small regional operators and Freedom Mobile out of it. And Freedom Mobile is getting lamer and lamer now that it's owned by Shore and kind of complicit in this whole fucking system. And this time, naturally, 
We've got to kind of fool me once, shame on you, PKP, situation going on. People say Videotron are just gonna flip the Spectrum for a profit like last time and walk away and take that Spectrum to the bank. But if you look closer at what happened last time, that Spectrum auction is not as much of a failure as it may seem. In a series of deals, Videotron built a relationship with Rogers that gave them access to the Rogers network outside of Quebec for the customer base. And they used their Spectrum in Ontario as a bargaining chip to get that deal. And this has allowed Videotron to sell mobile plans to people living in Quebec and Ottawa that would let them reliably travel around the country and use their phones just like any of the other big guys. People signed up in a way that they wouldn't have if visiting Toronto meant some sort of roaming charge per megabyte or very degraded service or other hassle. And they've now built up a substantial subscriber base, over 1.5 million customers. So I actually think Videotron played both the system and the other operators appearing to give Rogers an opportunity to halt their expansion at the Ottawa River, but ultimately using Rogers to build a solid and large subscriber base at home in Quebec. And that base sets them up to be a real threat long term and lets them do things like, I don't know, throw a billion dollars at an auction. <laughs> so obviously Videotron can now go and build cell phone towers and offer its mobile services in other parts of Canada, but they have another torpedo on the water and the optimal plan is for them to both hit. Rogers, as I covered in my previous video, yeah, link, is trying to buy a little family owned operation called Shaw. Shaw has a subsidiary, which is the main competitor to the big three in other parts of Canada, Freedom Mobile. Now, PKP is constantly pushing for the feds to force Freedom to be spun off from this merger and not allowed to be absorbed by Rogers because he knows that Videotron is the most likely company to snatch them up. It would more than double Videotron's subscriber base and give them subscribers all across the country. And it would probably also mean that they got infrastructure and operations stuff. But the thing is, Freedom and Shaw totally sat out the 5G auction. They didn't buy any of the 5G Spectrum. So if Freedom does get spun off, Videotron needed to buy 5G Spectrum for it to use. It's kind of like paying for an all-you-can-eat buffet, but then finding out that you didn't get given a plate by the restaurant. So Videotron has proactively bought its own big plate along to the buffet. Got your big plate, Alan? Yes. Obviously, Videotron has some real challenges ahead of it. All of these commitments are expensive, even with the discounted spectrum, and the purchase of freedom is far from a sure thing. Uh, <laughs> 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 News. Canada has a corruption problem. Oh yes we do. <laughs> corruption in Canada takes a kind of different form. It's not the like shameless campaign contributions and strippers and cocaine and revolving doors thing. Unless you're in Quebec where corruption classic edition still does a really roaring trade. It's not all good living here, you know, uh, cheap cell phone plans. Really shit roads. Basically corruption in Canada is built on lobbyists clocking in as much face time as possible with the regulators. So the regulators find it awkward and hard to regulate them. It's just so Canadian. Wouldn't want to be rude. Perfect example of this. Here is the CRTC chair having a beer with a Bell executive right before they made a ruling that greatly benefited Bell. And that beer is probably all above board, you know, paid for fair and square by the CRTC chair. But the price we actually pay for these two people not having an impersonal relationship routinely costs the public. Their poor decisions over the years come from hundreds of hours of meetings and conversations with lobbyists who are basically professional manipulators. And I mean, hats off to the lobbyists across many industries. They have softly kept the wheel turned you know, in slightly the wrong direction for decades now. So it's totally possible that the federal government will get talked into allowing Rogers to absorb its competition without spinning off freedom. And if they allow the merger or some other buyer comes in, Videotron will have to decide if it wants to do things the hard way and build a subscriber base from scratch, which would still be a viable choice because if Rogers does do the merger, most of those regions are gonna get knocked back down to just three operators. So if that happens, it could decide to do what it did last time and trade or sell away the spectrum for what it wants. So maybe they'll decide to build a network in Ontario and do a deal with TELUS to get access to their network in the rest of Canada. People would shit on that as a failure, but 
that would mean more than half of Canadians had four options and those cheaper prices that come with it. All of this is really a story of the benefits of smart long-term policy, holding the course and listening to the consensus from economists. Hey, what do you know? Competition really does bring down prices. In 2005, the CRTC and Liberal minority government forced the big three to offer phone number portability, meaning that a person could change to a different operator without losing their phone number. Just this simple act made shopping around for a deal an option and made everything a lot more competitive. And that's why you have a lot less new number who dis these days. And then after winning power, the conservatives really took it to the telcos. The first tiered wireless auction in 2008 was run, which enabled a bunch of new competition, including Videotron to show up. And despite being heavily lobbied, they kept doing it with auctions in 2013. And when the liberals came in, they didn't cancel the program. They stayed the course. It took a long time for competition to build up. They literally had to build towers and sales teams and shop fronts and many of the operators failed or were bought out over the years. But now we are left with the first generation of survivors and the competition has started to do its work. Freedom and Videotron have the lowest prices per minute and cost per gigabyte in the markets that they're in. And you can see the other companies showing up in the Spectrum auction who make up the next wave and could add a fifth or sixth operator to some markets if this keeps up. The current scheme is definitely not perfect. I mean, I cannot believe that the feds didn't explicitly ban spectrum flipping, so we don't have to sit here wondering if some of these guys are just gonna sell their spectrum to Telus in three years and waste everyone's time. The government could easily just buy back spectrum that wasn't used uh, in a two year period and then re-auction it to other startups. And the reason that we want all of the spectrum to be put to work soon is that by selling the valuable spectrum real estate at a discounted price, we are effectively subsidizing these companies. If Videotron or ExploreNet end up flipping it and selling it for a profit, it's less government revenue and better balance sheets for these Canadian corporations. And I guess that when we talk about Canadian corruption, these companies are lobbying themselves to not have the loophole closed and saying stuff like, well, if you make it so we can't sell the Spectrum, then we wouldn't want to buy it in the first place because it would be too high risk. Something like that, anyway. Price-wise, at least, having competition has achieved more than decades of corporate welfare and working with the oligarchs has ever done. The amount of money the government has spent over the years paying them to just do their jobs is astounding and very frustrating. Acting like we're asking them to give every polar bear an iPhone. Oh, it's so hard. Unless you pay us. How come Burning Man still has better cell service than half of Canada's north? Australia is another large, sparsely populated country, but they have some of the cheapest and fastest wireless in the world. Canada is big is just not an excuse. What are you, a fucking kid looking at your first atlas? Come on. So it seemed to me like this is all a good news story. I mean, everyone likes crossing something off their to-do list and having one of our oligopolies finally facing some competition, you know, felt like doing that as a nation. Kind of like when we uh, legalized weed and it was like, oh, we actually managed to regulate and tax marijuana. Nice. But I wanted to know if Videotron was actually competitive after I did the last video on this. You know, it seemed quite possible that they may have cheaper prices, but the quality of a product or the service might be worse because people in Quebec are very loyal to these corporations and they might put up with something that someone in Ontario wouldn't put up with you know, to support a local business. So I decided to try it out. I joined both Videotron and their low cost flanker brand called Fizz. And well, I have literally never noticed anything change. The experience of Videotron, I would compare to like Bell. It's a bit more expensive and its customer service is more hands-on. So you go into a shop or you give them a call when you want stuff. And the website has a lot going on and kind of things you can tell have been kind of patched on over the years. So if you're the sort of person who, when you change your cell phone plan, would like to call a customer service representative, Videotron, that's a good option. The thing I would recommend though is their low cost brand, Fizz. It's a brand new company. So the site and the services are super easy to use and you can tell it's targeted like right at millennials. So for these services, I kept my number, thanks 2005 government, and it was instantly ported across with no downtime. I now pay less than I ever have for a phone in my life, thanks 2008 to present government. 
when I started with Fizz, my plan cost $31, but when I signed in the other day, it had changed and gone down to $30. Whoa! And in reality, over the last five months, I have paid on average $12.50 a month for Fizz because someone referred me and my plan is just so cheap. So if you live in Quebec or Ottawa and want to support competition, it is good. For those of you in the rest of Canada, fostering competition works. And if you can vote with your wallet, you should. Have a look around, see if there's another operator, and try to throw some money their way instead of into the oligopoly. And keep your eyes peeled. Hopefully an eccentric Quebecois billionaire shows up in your neck of the woods sometime soon and starts offering you a serious nationwide fourth carrier option. My middle name in university was Weed, or maybe Civilization 4, or maybe South Park reruns. I definitely wasn't Paige attending class, Saunders. <laughs> to business! May it serve the customer while making a profit that is not exorbitant and unfair. Perfect example of this? Oh yeah. Yes, I killed the fly. Yes, success. Oh, that's, that feels like a big one. It is very annoying filming when a fly shows up. It, it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Especially in Ontario, it wasn't a big fly, it was a fruit fly. I thought I saw another one. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Duh! Okay. <laughs> and the purchase of freedom is far from a sure thing. See what I did there? Genius. Genius stuff. God.